Hi everybody, good morning. This is Jean here. Jean True Love from True Love Quilts for you. I am going to be working on my Row Along with Jean sampler quilt. <laughs> Wonder of wonders, I'm back to it. Um, I haven't finished the tutorial that I'm going to be doing. I explained that. Um, we're busy, but I'm going to be demonstrating this little unit here which is a flying geese block. Let me just show you just one second. I've also already done um, a solid color, but I'm going to be demonstrating how I'm going to be making a scrappy flying geese unit, okay? I'm going to be making these eight at a time, eight of these at a time. Now these measure, I think about three and a half by two and a, two and a, two something like that. I don't know. I'll be, t I'll be telling you what to exactly cut, but this tutorial is showing us how I make eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight at one time. It's really quite, really quite um, efficient and it works up very fairly quickly. As I say, I'm going to be doing a scrappy method that I have not yet cut out my other colors for. But as I was explaining, I'm going to have a, a lavender, a pink, a red, a green, a yellow from my fat quarter um, uh, mix that I have here. So this is this is how my, um, like um, I guess a, a board, no, no, like a sashing will end up. It's not too big. I was experimenting with larger flying geese units. You can make them big. There's a math to it. You got to look it up. I don't know. I, I messed up quite a few times. Oh, I did mess up making, I believe it was these. It was funny. I lost a piece of fabric and I sewed it on the back. I just cut it off. It's fine. You'll see. I didn't edit that out. I'm too tired. Um, so this tutorial is just that. Flying geese eight at a time. Again, if you want them larger, you can go on um, any, like just Google the sizes of flying geese. What you're going to be cutting this unit here. And then the little, I guess this is the goose and these are the wings. I think that's what it is, how it, how it, how it explains it. Um, but I was cutting four inch, the, the colored fabric, and two and a quarter inch of these wings. And I show you and tell you exactly how. When you're making your eight, by all means, you could just cut them out of one fabric and just continue one row of sashing, flying geese sashing, like that, all red, and simplify it. But I'm going to be doing the scrappy method. Um, I will be explaining that. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I did mess up a little bit, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, and I'm working on that. I'm really, really pleased. We've been busy this summer. As you know, I'm healing from my bike fall. Um, my hip's just a little bit sore, but I'm healing. As you know, I fell from my bike and I'm doing good. We've been going to our convention. It's been wonderful. Um, but I just wanted to get this put up for you. And um, again, thank you for all your lovely comments on all my previous videos. Um, I do have a few sharing is caring videos coming up but right now I thought if, if you wanted to get stuck in to a flying geese sashing um, row for our row by row quilt actually I was looking at it you could put them up like this around the quilt as our quilt is evolving and I have will take pictures of it I've only done these these little few um, I haven't done the whole thing but you understand um, my next video, I will have finished this, the row and go on to the next whatever it is I'm going to be doing. So again, I hope you enjoy this tutorial, folks. Thank you so much for all your lovely kind words and your support. All right. Love from the true loves. See ya. So this time I'm going to be making flying geese, a uh, flying geese row to go across my uh, row along sampler quilt here. I have made one, these are samples, I will be using this, but this is just a sample of what I'm going to be doing. As you can see here, there's four flying geese that are the regular uh, one, two colors. The, the geese and the wings, I guess that's called. I don't know. And then here I have another two color that have not been sewn together. Okay. I'm going to be demonstrating right now how to make eight flying geese. 
pretty much at one time getting up a bit to iron and to press things but as you can see this unit here sewn together are the exact sizes of this these here one two three four which measures six inches measures six inches by uh, this is unfinished three and a half inches okay this is measuring six inches by three and a half inches okay the reason i'm doing it this way is i want a scrappy flying geese row all right by all means you could be doing it just one color by all means absolutely and because i've done it eight at a time it works up really quite quickly if you want to do that but i will be dividing this up my row is say 48 inches i'm not quite sure my row is say 48 inches wide at this point this is six inches i might need eight or nine of these units to put together scrappy a blue a red a pink a white so but right now i'm just going to be showing you how i'm making this one here and then we have to imagine because i'm not going to be able to finish it right now this put together scrappy okay so right now i'm just concentrating on how i've made eight flying geese units um, out of my fabric that I'm going to be cutting here okay now I'm going to take uh, right now I'm going to be taking my this uh, fat quarter I quite like this and I'm going to be cutting two neaten it up on this edge here I'm going to be cutting two uh, four inch squares I'm just going to cut that that silver draw there how you cut them because it's very important that you really cut well now as you know I'm using my ruler and I'm finding the four inch here and the four inch there and, and I'm going to be cutting two of these four inch squares <clears throat> there's one I'll go over and I'll just press that a bit and then there's two Okay, so I have my two four inch squares. What I've done ahead of time is I have cut out from my script fabric that you know that is this fabric here that I'm using. I've cut out um, quite a few, because I'm gonna be needing a few, of my two and a quarter inch squares, okay? So this is four inches, two four inches, and then for each of these, I'm going to be needing eight, eight, two and a quarter inch squares to make the 16 okay so follow along with me so i've gone All over right. and i've pressed my squares here because they were a little bit creased it's fairly important that you have them pressed well so what i'm going to do is having it like this with the pretty side of my fabric up i'm going to be taking a square my two and a quarter inch square with the pretty side down and i'm going to be putting one right up in that corner there like that and another one pretty side down in this opposite corner then I'm going to do the exact same thing pretty side down in that corner of the second one and pretty side down okay they will overlap you will see a little square here they will overlap that's exactly what you want now with my pen and my straight edge what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on one at a time I'm going to put my straight edge from that point to that point whoops <laughs> to this point down here okay you see that i'm going to be taking my straight edge right through three areas one two three holding it tightly and i start in the middle with my marker it's i i use a pen which is fine because we're going to be cutting it away i start at the middle and go up so my fabric doesn't ruck up and i come back down to my point okay and there's my line if you can see that I don't know if you can see it I'm going to do the exact same thing with my second piece here I'm going to scratch them together to be nice and square and I'm going to have three points I'm going to have my center point my top point and my bottom point get them scratched together now you can mark your squares if you want separately which is awesome corner to corner okay there we go now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put them aside i'm going to take four more and i'm going to mark the corners i'm going to mark these like this 
and these are two and a quarter from corner to corner. This will be my next step when we go over to the machine. I go over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew these, I'll show you. So I have my quarter inch foot on and I'm making sure my, my stitches are, are well. I've just start, sat down at my machine. And what I'm going to be doing here, as you can see, let me just put this in the frame. I'm going to be chain piecing. I'm going to be putting my threads underneath my presser foot there and I'm going to start my quarter inch um, sewing line a quarter inch away from that marked line okay I'm not pinning by all means if you would like to put a pin on there you can but I don't do that I'm trying to do this with sort of one hand just go slowly you're going to be going through that intersection like that quarter inch away from that line I stop with my needle down and then, oops, where did the other one go? Oh, it flew off. Oh, here it is. Oh no, I don't know where it went. <laughs> I don't know where it went. <laughs> it flew off somewhere. When I'm editing, I'll find it. Well, I have an extra one here. So there you go. So there's my line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up here, as you can see. Let's put it over like this. Sorry about that. I wonder where that piece went. <laughs> Maybe it's in here. Yeah, it's messed up. Anyway, um, I'm going to lift up my presser foot just slightly, just to have put that right underneath, and I'm just going to continue. This is called chain piecing. Don't go fast. You can see where my lines match up, even though this wasn't the original one. <laughs> I don't know where it is. I have to go mark another one. Now I'm going to need leave my needle down, okay? And as as you know, people who have been following me, I put my presser foot up. This is a mechanical machine. And I'm just going to pinch that. And I'm going to pull. Oh, I think my battery ran out. What I have done, actually, is I've turned this around. And I'm going to, just at that point there, okay? And I'm just going to come right back on that quarter inch away from my marked line, okay? I think my, my battery ran out. So here I am, just chain piecing up one side and down the other. That's all we're doing. Coming to the end. No need to back stitch. My presser foot up, pinch and pull. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate this chain here, where, where it was chain. And then what I'm going to do is very carefully, I'm going to cut on that line. I'm going to cut on the line. Being very careful, you have your quarter inch on either side, like so. Oh, there's my piece of fabric. <laughs> Oh, look, <laughs> I should do this over. Ah, no, I'm not going to do it over. I'm just going to cut that off. <laughs> it got caught underneath. That's okay. I got it. I had an extra one waiting. So I got to trim this off. This is so not how you do these things. That's okay. So now, <laughs> that's okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these apart. <laughs> this is real professional here, Jean. Oh, it's so funny. You cut them apart, you'll never know. And I'm going to go over to my ironing board. So I have my sweet little ironing board here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the seams. Okay, you'll never know that other one was caught underneath. <laughs> it's all right. It's fine. And then I'm going to very carefully, I'm just going to nudge this up. I'm going to nudge my little flaps up. Okay, being careful not to, to um, I always say skew them. But I think that's a very good description. Being very careful not to, like, make them crooked or anything. My machine, and I have my... Oh, I need, I need another one because I messed up that. So here's, here's one to set to the side. Cut a, a, I've cut some extra. And I just have a straight edge, and all I'm going to do is mark that one from corner to corner because <laughs> I, I sewed I sewed it wrong that's so funny I sewed it into the seam it's fine so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these I'm going to cut away all of these uh, threads here important don't cut a, don't cut any of these dog ears off that's very very important okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my four other ones 
and I'm going to put that in that corner there, okay? And I'm going to do the exact same thing next to my marked line. I'm going to go down, and where I'm going to aim for is this intersection right here, where the where the fabric comes together, right there. It's a quarter of an inch, okay? I'm going to aim my needle and my press the foot right to that intersection, just like that. And I have my needle down. I'm going to take my next one, the point up here, and I'm going to grab a marked two and a quarter inch square. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to nudge that right underneath and continue stitching. And I'm going to end up on that little intersection there. And I'll continue with all four of them. Making sure my line is going this way. Tuck it right under, match up those lines, quarter inch away aiming to this intersection right there. Thank you, there. Scratch it together, tuck it under there, and aiming right to this intersection right there. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pinch that if after the, fab the threads have been relaxed very carefully, and I'm just going to come back on myself. Just going to come back on myself. Starting at that intersection there, that, 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 that point there, okay? Because they're in a chain, they'll all be in the proper order. There we go. Don't rush this. There's that intersection. I'm going to put my needle right there. Quarter inch away. Line everything up right into that intersection quarter inch away. Oops, turn this around. <laughs> quarter inch away. And off. And I always say pinch and pull because you don't want to stress that. And again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut away my chains. My little threads that kept the fabrics together. And then again, I'm going to cut on the marked line. And seven, eight. Back over to our ironing board. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that little seam and then press that up like so. I'll just continue setting this final seam here of our little flying geese units and there is our sweet little flying geese unit. So now I'm back at my machine and what I've done or I'm going to be doing is for demonstration purposes I have just made um, three different sets of flying geese here. At the for my for my regular quilt that I'm going to be doing that I'm I don't have time to finish up right now, but I will have made eight sets of these. Okay, eight or nine sets. It doesn't matter if I have a few left over. Um, using my four inch squares of my fab my my fabric and then my two and a quarter inch squares here. I will have had like eight or nine sets of these, okay? Um, and because I want to make it scrappy, but I'm just showing you now how I'm going to sew them together. So I have three, a purple, a pink, and a red, and say I then would have a green, a blue, a yellow. I've had made up those sets. How I'm going to sew my little units together here is um, we're going to very carefully want to configure the um, points all going one way, obviously, okay? So then I'm going to put the pretty side over to this pretty side on that side like that. But then how I'm go and for you ha you're going to be having these dog ears, these little points. You want to keep them. Make sure you keep them. What I'm going to do is I'm then going to turn this over, okay? And as you see there, there's a dog ear there. There's your point and there's a dog ear over here. I'm going to put them underneath my needle. 
where again the dog ears whoops let me move this over it's difficult <laughs> to, to film and to sew at the same time oh please excuse me okay so now what i've done is i have that little intersection where the dog ear is and the fabric on this side so i'm sewing on this side okay and i'm going to be just pulling that little dog ear out under there oh, down there and i can see that my quarter inch without cutting my point off is right there okay so i'm just going to hold that <clears throat> hold that like that it's a little fiddly but not too bad oops as i say that <laughs> it's a little bit fiddly but there you go now i'm just going to start quarter of an inch at that dog ear that doesn't match too much but that's okay and there, I'm, there's my point. I'm coming up. I don't want to go into the point. I don't want to come out. I just sort of want to go on top of that point and then head my needle to this intersection right there where that dog ear is. And hopefully, pinch and pull, hopefully my geese will be going the same direction. Yeah. And it's a little bit, it's slightly I could go a little bit more. I could go a little tiny bit more onto that point. My hands was in the way. Yes, I've, I've sort of lost my quarter inch. So you can always come back slowly and just, just catch that point right like that. And if your points are cut off, don't worry about it. <laughs> That's the last of your worries. But there you go. That's a little bit better. You see that? It's right there. So now I would just be continuing my purple, my pink, my red, my green. Again, I want to configure this properly, like so. And then I want to put the pretty sides down on this side. And then I'm going to flip the whole thing over, like that. And I have my dog ear up here. I have my dog ear where I'm going to start. Don't cut those dog ears off. I have my quarter inch point there. My point is right there. So I'm aiming to that point, neither cutting it off or making it too big, just stitching it like that. And then I'm going to come again to this dog-eared point right there. And it's pretty much a quarter inch seam. And there I have my, will, will be a scrappy unit. Hopefully I, I can explain this um, in advance, in, in the beginning of this video, that you, I want a scrappy vid, uh, I, I want a scrappy border. By all means, you don't have to have a scrappy border, and I'll explain that. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over and I'm going to press this. And as I always say, let the fabric decide where that wants to go. To me, all of these seams want to go that way. They want to go up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give that a little bit of spray, and I'm going to push my seams right up. I'm going to continue sewing my units together, scrappy, and then to make the 48 inches. If it's if it's a little bit if it's a little bit small, I can add a hunk at the end. If it's a little bit big, I'll take one off, whatever. But I'm going to make eight of each of these units. So I do hope that makes sense, folks. And um, yeah, it's a sweet little border. It will be going on a row like that. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial, how to make eight flying geese at one time this? and right thank up. you very much and i will check back with you all right love from the true loves bye bye